To jumpstart your backbone learning in this lesson, we're actually not going to discuss backbone yet. Instead, I want to focus on the idea of storing data or representing your data, because that's one of the core beliefs of backbone is, and you've probably heard this before, get your truth out of the DOM. And so what that translates to is at all times, we should know exactly what data is being worked with. We shouldn't be having to use jQuery to query the DOM to fetch some specific value. We should always be tracking that value with Backbone. So let's go ahead and create a new file here and we'll just call it main.js and we'll go ahead and create that file now. Let's begin by defining some data. So let's say we're working with a quiz. Well, how would you describe a quiz? And this will be essentially our model. So think about it. A quiz would have a number of questions, perhaps. A quiz would have the name of the instructor. So if you're taking a backbone quiz, I would be the instructor, Jeffrey Way. A quiz might also have an ability to determine which answers were correct and which answers were wrong. A quiz would have a list of questions. What else? Well, it would have a title. There's lots of things. And this is how we're describing our quiz model. So let's see how we might accomplish this with regular vanilla JavaScript. Well, we might do something like this. And you know what? For now, let's just make it global so that we can easily access it from Chrome Developer Tools. So I will say var quiz equals a function. And now let's describe the quiz. Well, the quiz needs to have a title. So we're going to attach it, this.title and maybe that will be passed in. So we will accept an argument called title, and I'll zoom in just a few clicks, and then we will assign that. So if we were to leave it just like this, and we come back to Chrome DevTools, once again, bring up the console. Now let's try to run quiz, and we do have access to it. So let's assign it to a variable. Var quiz equals a new quiz, and the title will be my first quiz. So now if I run quiz, we will get this object return and we do have access to title. So at this point I can run quiz.title or body.html is quiz.title and that will show up on the screen as you can see right there. Good. So we've already begun defining our quiz model. This is the model that represents our data. And there's lots of ways you can think about this. You can also think of it in terms of what's pretty common is a person. Well, a person would be our model. How do you describe or define a person? Well, in that case, you would have var person. And let's say a person should have a name. So we'll say this.name equals name. And what else? Well, a person should have an age. So this.age equals age. And you know what? Why don't we do this? Why don't we accept a config object instead and that way we can just attach the properties and we don't have to memorize a bunch of different arguments because that's not a good idea. So we know a person has a name, a person has an age, maybe a person will have a job. So this dot occupation equals config dot occupation. And then maybe a person has some other actions that he can do. So a person can work. Well, okay. Well, in that case, we probably don't want to attach it to the person object like this. You could do it and it would work, but then at this point, this is common data. So all instances of person would be executing this method. And in those situations, if you're creating lots of instances, you would have lots of work functions in memory. And that's not a good idea. So instead, what we're gonna do is attach it to the prototype. Person.prototype.work equals a function. And now I'm simply going to return this.name is working, just something gibberish oriented, but that should work now. All right, so let's try it again. Let's switch back over to Chrome DevTools and we'll say var person equals a new person. And now we need to give it some of our data. So our person needs to have a name, an age, and an occupation. Well, the name will be my own name. The age will be my age and occupation will be web developer. Great, so now we have this new person object. If I run it, now you can see we have all of that data. And if we open up the proto object, you'll see it does have access to that work method. So remember, when you're attaching it to the prototype, all instances of this person object will share that method rather than having to recreate that function multiple times for every instance. As a rule of thumb, think of the things that you define directly to person as things that will be specific to each instance. So each person will have its own name. Each person will have a unique age. However, many people will go to work. 
many people will eat dinner. Those are common traits, and those should be placed on the prototype. So let's try this. We're going to check this new person's age, 27, person name, of course, person occupation. And now let's send this person to work. So person, work. And now we can see Jeffrey Way is working. If we were to create a new person, var person 2 equals new person, name will be John Doe, age is 35, and occupation will be a web designer. Now we can tell that person to go to work, and notice that the output will be unique to that person. So person 1 that work is myself, but our next person is John Doe, and he has his own characteristics and traits or properties. So now that we know this basic idea of how to represent data, how to organize data, in the next lesson, let's figure out how we could use a backbone model to instead represent this.